Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, This week, I was working at home on Wednesday because my kids had a, a virtual learning day that day, and I was in the same room as Elisha, and at one point, Elisha gave me a furtive glance and turned his laptop away from me. So I said, turn your laptop this way so I can see, what you, see what's on your screen. He said, but I don't want you to see what's on my screen. <laughs> he was uh, in a Zoom meeting, but he was playing around on a game while he was in his, he was muted, so he could, and uh, so we, we, we had to settle that. But uh, the point is, we don't, in today's society, we don't always mind seeing others, but we don't always want to be seen. Elisha was just maybe a bit more honest than most of us. And that really flows into our gospel lesson from John chapter 3. This week, Jesus is conversing with Nicodemus. Now, one of the most prevalent themes in John's gospel is light and darkness. Nicodemus, turns out, comes to Jesus at night in the dark, and he can't see very clearly, we'll learn. Uh, Well, who is Nicodemus? Nicodemus is a member of the uh, Sanhedrin, the most powerful Jewish governing body of the time, and he's uh, used to making judgments uh, about individuals and about what the city probably should do. He's kind of like a a city councilman or a congressman, sort of. Uh, Nicodemus' opening comment is, We know you are a teacher. The signs you perform show you are from God. Now, Nicodemus believes he's offering Jesus an olive branch here. He's complimenting him. And to his credit, he's saying something that most of the other religious leaders wouldn't say. The signs you give are proof that you are from God. But Jesus' response is, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, you wouldn't recognize the kingdom of God if it bit you, on the backside. Well, although Nicodemus admits Jesus is from God, he doesn't really get it. Jesus says, until you're born of water and the Spirit, you can't possibly see God's kingdom. You've got to be in it before you can see it. You who call yourselves the teachers of Israel think what people need is a lesson on laws and rules. However, what the world needs most is not more information or rules, but salvation. The problem is not a lack of knowledge or light. The problem is the world's avoidance of the light and truth. Jesus says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but the world loves darkness because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Jesus' words on light and darkness are answering Nicodemus' question, how can this be? You know, when he said, be born of water and the Spirit, um, Jesus is saying we are not ready to accept uh, God's kingdom. We fight consciously and subconsciously against being exposed. Jesus tells Nicodemus he can't see straight until God gives him new birth and baptizes him with the Spirit to see. Even the nature of Nicodemus' incredulous question, uh, how can this be, betrays the doubt that he has, which is the exact opposite of what God calls for in his kingdom, faith, trust, and loyalty to Yahweh. Uh, Nicodemus is used to seeing the world and rendering his, ju- his judgments about it. That's what the Sanhedrin did. They, they made judgments. They were supposed to do that. The Romans gave them authority in exchange for overseeing things. Uh, but here, Nicodemus sa- Jesus says, Nicodemus, he can't simply observe. Rather, he must come into the light. It's not the time for Nicodemus' judgment. Rather, now it's time for faith. Faith in Jesus, it's it's not just a a belief system. 
It's commitment to Jesus. Stepping out in faith includes stepping into the light and being more honest with God and, and with one another as well. Well, this conversation unveils what Jesus is here on earth to do. Jesus doesn't seem to have much interest in whether Nicodemus pays him a compliment or not. Even though Nicodemus acknowledges that Jesus is performing signs, the simple admonition or the simple admission doesn't do Nicodemus any good. As Nicodemus himself admits, there really is no choice but to see the signs. It's how you respond to them that matters. What's the point? Well, this verse, John uh, chapter 3, verse 16, points to the signs that the sign is to trust in the one whom God has sent. The ultimate sign will be the Son of Man lifted up, like we read about in our reading from Numbers. Everyone looked to the serpent and they lived, and Jesus says, everyone who looks to the Son of Man lifted up will have eternal life. Whoever trusts in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. The goal of our faith, of Jesus, and his conversation with Nicodemus, the goal is not that people would simply acknowledge that Jesus is from God. It's trusting in Jesus that matters. It's trust, um, it's believing God exists or that he can do miracles doesn't really save you. Simply showing up at church because you're supposed to doesn't save you. What matters is faith. Trusting in Jesus to do what he says. And that's what faith looks like. Coming to Jesus with your problems and asking for his advice. It means coming to Jesus for forgiveness and help. Faith is sticking to Jesus through the highs and lows because he sticks with us through the highs and lows. What matters, again, is not seeing the signs but comprehending what they mean and believing in the sign uh, that they point, the one that they point towards. Uh, the end result of encountering Jesus will either be faith or rejection. You don't just uh, figure out the truth about Jesus. It's, it's not, faith is not just a historical or kind of philosophical journey where you kind of Indiana Jones it and you find the hidden truth. No, what, when we find out who Jesus is, it turns out we're not just enlightened about him or about who Jesus is, we also find out who we are. When we are confronted with the truth, the lies and deceptions in our lives stand out more. Uh, we don't want our sins to be brought into the light, though. We'd rather they remain secret, hidden, and unchallenged. Uh, we don't always want others to know what we're doing. And if you've ever been in a Zoom meeting, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. When someone's screen goes dark, you immediately start to wonder, are they paying attention? Um, or did they turn off video option in their Zoom so that they could take a nap or play on their phone or do some other work? I suppose in some cases there are legitimate reasons why they would need, there, there are some times when there's legitimate reasons to turn off their video, but that's often not the reason that people turn their video off. It's because they might be doing something that you don't, they don't want you to see. And probably a lot of times they're not paying as close of attention to the meeting as they ought to be doing. Well, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world but the world loved darkness because their deeds were evil. Uh, Jesus came to his own even though his own did not receive him. Jesus was born and preached and healed and taught in Palestine, and certainly they were amazed, and, and some believed, but on the whole, he was rejected. We, too, sometimes reject Jesus. We may be amazed, but... We're uh, scared to let him into our personal lives for what, fear of what he might expose. Yet the good news is that though the world and sometimes even we opposed Jesus, it did not stop him. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
Rather, God worked out our rejection of the Savior into His plan of salvation. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. And that's what's happening at the cross. Jesus is being rejected. The world is hiding from, rejecting, and killing the truth. Yet God is doing something different. God is providing the way, the truth, and the life. The Son of Man is lifted up so that everyone may see Him upon the cross, and so that everyone who looks to Him may have eternal life in Him. Once again, Jesus invites us to meet Him, to step into the light, be humbled, and find light and life. In Jesus' name, amen.